You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for July 24th, 2020. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we've been person, man, woman, camera, TVing for years. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Person, man, woman, camera, TV, hooker, Big Mac. He just loves lamp. That's all. He just loves <laughs> he loves lamp. And and really, I mean TV camera man. Is, uh-huh. that's, those are just these are just the last little dying um, synapses Brain rattling cells. around, <laughs> rattling around that big syphilitic racist yeah. dome of his, and yeah. it's um, it's a pity, it's a shame, it is um, still a crime against democracy that sixty million people in this country stand behind this asshole. Yeah. They are the problem. He is not the problem. He is the immediate problem. They are the long term problem. And until we figure out how to how to solve for the Republican base, as opposed to the way the Republican base manifests itself in elected representatives, we're going to just keep having problems like this, and it's just going to keep getting worse. Well, so, and don't forget the billionaires that that fund manipulation of those weak minded people. Yeah, well, that's you know, there's, I was there's big reading, money. I was reading today that the Mercers have abandoned Trump and ghosted him, and oh. a lot of other people are you know not giving money like they quote unquote should. Because they see the polls and he's going to lose. And why invest money in that when you can save your money and invest in a rebranding of the Republican Party? Because those 60 million people, the ones that don't, you know, haven't already rolled over to Q, Mm -hmm. (laughs) the QAnon, you know, you got you got that's going to be interesting to see how how far that goes, Um, how wacky those people remain. But. For sure, we're going to have a very large number of Republicans who've never heard of Donald Trump. I, I'm, if I could buy stock in people who are now independents, air, yep. quote, air quote, I would take all of our money, honey, all of it, every and nickel. Put it in. I'm an independent in, constitutional an independent. conservative. Yep. I never liked the tweeting. I, yes, that would I, be I, I swear to you, that is the future. I've seen – you know why I can see the future so clearly? Because I can see the past. Because we've I just, lived it. Yes. I just look over my shoulder and go, hey, didn't we do this already? Like mm-hmm. at least a couple of times? Yeah, we did. Why do we think this will be any different? Because Republicans have changed their basic nature? No, because people who, who profit from uh, feeding them red meat and then harvesting their votes and their money have changed, have grown a set of principles, have grown a spine, have developed a sense of morality? No. no. Well, then, what? this is toxic real estate, and yeah. somebody's going to build a fucking hotel exactly. on this toxic real estate because there's, yep. there's, no, there's no other pool of voters to draw from. You're going to have to, if you want to win anything, anyway. Well, and they've convinced themselves that they're half. Sure. They're half of America. No, half of least. America. And, well, that's the problem. <laughs> they're with, not. No, they're not half. They're they're a fraction of a fraction. But, you know, the, the same dynamic is going to keep going on and on until essentially our generation is uh, in nursing homes. And mm-hmm. the next generation is is just pushing aside all of the nonsense people are fighting yep. over now. Exactly. Um, That's it. Yep. Just, they're, and, they won't be having any of it. But until no. then, it's going to be, there's going to be a, a lot of people on the right who just believe stupid, crazy shit and a whole industry yep. feeding them stuff to, and calling them intellectuals and, and searching through the, the dumpster of the right to find some nugget of, of someone who can be promoted as an intellectual and there'll be think tanks and there'll be newsletters and there'll be TV shows. And then there'll be this group of quivering, you know, royalists in the middle who don't want anyone to take a side and please stop fighting. Can't we be civil? And the rest of us are going to be fighting for our country for the rest of our lives against the people. Well, on and the that right. civility is real interesting, considering that one of the big stories this week is calling a sitting congressman a fucking bitch. Right. And that is apparently perfectly OK oh, with the right. It's the shocking thing is. Uh, AOC saying those words on the floor. Of the yeah, Congress and the New because, York Times was appalled that she would she would sully the right. floor of the House of Representatives with right. that kind of language when she's quoting a Republican. Look, don't you realize 
Louis Gohmert works here, okay? <laughs> you don't want to sully this august body with <laughs> Louis Gohmert works here. Inhofe worked here. This and was... Junior Junior Dude yeah. brought to our attention that Louis Gohmert's trying to to uh introduce a bill into the House of Representatives banning the Democrat Party. Yes, and, and that's good that's good. <laughs> It's see the thing is he'll call it a Democrat Party and misspell it as the Democrat Party and mm-hmm. miss us by about two letters and it yeah. Was a, yeah okay let's let's do that let's ban those yeah. Democrat Party people well, and it goes to show you that being a minority in the House is really the worst it's really oh. bad well it so. also goes to show you that if you look past Louis Gohmert if you just look look through Louis Gohmert as a lens onto what people who would vote for Louis Gohmert are like, yeah, yeah. you just realize, oh God, these really just are primates. I mean, these are just absolute de-evolved head cases. These are, these really are reprogrammable meat bags and someone's yep. going to come along. This is what Trump learned. If I tell these yeah. people the shit they want to believe out loud, as opposed to whispering it like Jeb wants to do, then they'll follow me. And someone is going to figure out a whole bunch of people are going to figure out, oh, all I have to do is be louder and more racist and more explicitly hateful and, and call the left commies and dictators and cancel culture, et cetera. I can get 10, 20, 30, 40, 60 million people to watch my show, to buy my newsletter, to vote me right. into office. And cause that's all they want to hear. These people are never going to admit they were wrong and there's no place. There's no, there's no place for them to retreat to. They've really backed themselves into a place where, it's this is the hill we're going to die on, which is why look for a whole bunch of people to suddenly discover their inner independence. Their uh, independence. And, and Trump disappointed them with the mask wearing he did. and the DACA he did. and, uh, you know, the, the talking about suburban women is if the suburbs matter the most, you and, know, because really it's. <laughs> and it's going to be a boom time for both sides to do it. Really yeah. is. It already is. I yep. mean, if, if you do, if please don't do like I do, because what I do is I actually listen to conservative podcasts and I read conservative publications, the ones that are the intellectual elite who are standing off to the side, appalled that their party was full of Republicans all this time. Sipping and, Chardonnay. And they really are. And I, I mentioned <laughs> yeah. this last week, the Mona Charon podcast. She is, yeah. might rightfully be called the godmother of the political right. Um, she has a podcast over at the Bulwark, and her the whole thesis last time was which one's worse, the left or the right? Oh my gosh! And it was the left, of course. You know, we're yeah. we're the real long term threat. The right's crazy, but they're bumbling. The left are the real threat because mm-hmm. we're the ones we're the we're the Marxists. She says Maoist and and or Marxist every third sentence. <laughs> that's and that's the intellectual elite that's of the our intellectual of the right elite. <laughs> of the non Trump right. They're they're they're, uh-huh. they're angling again. To find themselves a place where they can safely say, we are going to save you from the extremes on both sides. Well, so explain to me what is happening with Matt Gates versus Liz Cheney in the Republican caucus. Oh, it's a professional wrestling match. It is. <laughs> it is. It, you know, it's, it's Liz Cheney is there, there. The question among Republicans now is who is going to get to build the hotel on toxic boardwalk Mm -hmm. who's going to get control of the party. Mm -hmm. And some of the people like Matt Gates believe that, you know, the, the key to the hearts of these people is to, is to be as raw and unrefined and abusive and obnoxious and, and piss drunk frat boy ish as possible Mm -hmm. because they respect that. Cause that's why he looks up at Donald Trump. He sees this guy, this guy won. Being the biggest asshole in town. So I will be the biggest asshole in town. And Liz Cheney, who is a a, a spawn of the devil and, a, a, and an evil person in and of herself, who, 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 whose entire endowment is paid for by the blood of Iraqis. Right. Well, that's what American I wrote soldiers. on Twitter was your yeah. t- two Matt Gates. Mm-hmm. You know, Liz Cheney's suit is covered with the blood of Iraqi civilians and she's still better than you, Matt. And she's she's following the Bill Crystal path, which is if I get on the other side of the most obnoxious people in my party, mm-hmm. I will be granted absolution. People, yeah. liberals, fucking liberals, yeah. the, the the podcast boys will grant me absolution. Will, will they they gave it to Bill Crystal? They uh-huh. let they let Michael Gerson off the hook. Go down the right. whole long way. Uh, Joe Scarborough suddenly a leader of the resistance. So 
uh, she sees a route out of the hole that she dug for herself in just getting to the slightly to one side of a person who's a, as objectively nuts as Matt Gates, mm-hmm. and and picking mm-hmm. a fight with with the worst, dumbest, angriest, whitest, loudishest person in the room, and and then earning applause for that as right. if that's an accomplishment. Right. No, it's two rabbit rats fighting in the bottom of a, of a dumpster, you know, and I rooting for both of them to kill each other off, but she's trying to, to claw back some respectability. She wants to lead the party. She wants to, you know, be a, a big pisher in the new Republican party. And the way to do that. Well, I think she's, re- she's looking at the polls also and realizing that going against Dr. Fauci is a loser. Right. Among the American people. It just is. Right. And that's, so, and, but that's betraying the Tea Party by doing that. And and I the thing that makes me laugh and cry at the same time is one of the first posts I ever wrote <laughs> way back in 2005 was mm-hmm. exactly this subject. But, it, but yeah. it, at that time, it was Tom DeLay. Yep. Tom yep. DeLay, who was right. a, a blood drunk, um, owned, he figured out that uh, from the example of Newt Gingrich, that if you take your foot off the throat of your own party's caucus, they'll eat you alive. Mm-hmm. So his mm-hmm. his theory was just beat the shit out of everyone under me, keep them terrified and keep them off balance at all times. And I can I can show up to work drunk. I can say the dumbest things imaginable. And I'll still get to win because they don't dare fucking cross me. And all during that period, which David Brooks talked uh, about that as delayism. As if, you know, <laughs> see, it's Not never Republican. Republican. It's never Republican. It's never the Republicanism. It's delayism. It's lot is No, it's fucking Republicanism. Um, all during that time, as as Tom DeLay's support began to erode, as the Iraq war started to fall apart, as everything on the right began to turn into the shit pile that we always said it was. And and DeLay's corruption started to yeah. emerge oh, as yeah. well, you know. Which was, you know, I mean, just he was like just... Matt Gates, by the way. See, this is what I'm saying. So... <laughs> So everyone else, everyone else is just got their finger in the air waiting. Just they're trying to figure out which way is the wind blowing. Because if you if you go against Tom Delay too soon, he will destroy you. Mm-hmm. If you go against mm-hmm. Tom Delay too late, he will drag you down with him. Right. You gotta pick just the right time to jump off the bandwagon, and that's what's happening right now with the Republican Party. Everyone knows that Donald Trump is a fucking disaster, but mm-hmm. he's still a disaster who can throw lightning bolts from the top of the mountain. So and he all, can just one mean tweet and you lose your primary. And you're gone and you're yeah. dead. So yeah. they're trying to figure out there are the true believers who will die in the bunker with him and be replaced with another generation of assholes who will simply mm-hmm. walk in, take over their desks, and the Republican Party will go on as before. And the, everyone else is trying to fi- figure out exactly how to uh, splunge, you know, mm-hmm. the Monty Python term. I, I, want to, right. I, I don't want to be a yes man, but I want to agree with you, but I want to disagree with you, and I'm not being indecisive. So I'm going to invent a new concept called splunge, which is which is whatever you want to hear at the moment yeah. is what it is. Yes, right. You might be right, but you might be wrong, and I'm not being indecisive. But I also want to suck up to you, and that's where the entire elected Republican Party is right now. They mm-hmm. know that they that most 99 percent of them can't cross Al Capone, or Al Capone will take a baseball bat to their head. But they mm-hmm. also know sooner or later he's going down. Mm-hmm. So the, and the base will not forgive you if they think you cost him and them the throne. Yep. So they're and, trying and they and they might possibly lose face. Right. over your behavior. So in any all way. the right. rubios right. and the cottons are looking for the, an issue that they can sort of mount up and ride just far enough away from Donald Trump so that when the blast goes off they're not killed in the uh in the in the shockwave. Then they can go riding right back in and claim the party and and, and do a nice, you know, the, the funeral of Stalin. A great man, but it's time to move on. Right. And, well, and shed a few and tears. You know that funeral is going to be held on Morning Joe. Oh, yes. That's yeah. where they're going to have, you know, Donald Trump. He was president for four years. We're done with that. Yeah. Bring the country together and let's let's work in a bipartisan way to cut social security. Social security, oh, Medicare, Medicaid. Yeah. What? <laughs> right. Yeah, no, that we all agreed to that, right? I mean, we all uh-huh. that's what this meant was we all agree that we need to cut Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, mm-hmm. et cetera. Mm-hmm. No. And then you and I will be standing outside 
with our faces pressed on the glass, screaming, no, no that's no, not what it. we agreed to. <laughs> and well, I, hey, a whole bunch of liberals said these people were all righteous dudes now, right? Mm -hmm. So we can, mm -hmm. we can, whatever Bill Crystal has to say is solid gold because, hey, look at all the bona fides he has. Look at all these liberals who lined up and called him a hero. Look at all the liberal programs he's been on. Look at all the liberals who are his friends. And all of these people will ha now have their bona fides and their CVs all polished up. They, they are already on television. They're not going anywhere. They're not, if they didn't get fired over the Iraq war, they're never right. going anywhere. Right. right. So this will be the new media. And then and the new media will set the new rules of the game. They'll set the new parameters for every conversation. And you and I will have no place left to oh, hang no, our we do. This is episode 556, Drift Glass. We're, we'll be here forever. Oh, yeah. No, no. We'll be here. And we'll be and <laughs> and regrettably, you know, tune in a year from now when I'm saying exactly the same thing. Um, <laughs> you know, I, and I don't mean well, to be we'll depressing. We'll be talking about middle child's high school graduation at that point. Yes, we will. Yes, we so, will. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that time does go on and children grow up and things happen and We'll have things to talk about with all of our listeners, and we'll be hearing yes. from them about their lives and so forth. And I'm going well, to talk a little bit about that today. Um, what did you say about school panic? This is kind of interesting. Well, it's just um, – Please, go ahead. Baron Trump – Baron mm -hmm. Trump's school isn't opening in the fall. Right. And uh, the senator from Florida, former governor, Rick Scott – Mm -hmm. His grandchildren aren't going back to school. No, no we're not, go, they're not going not. back to No, they're going to do remote learning. Oh, right. really? Right. And apparently it's it's too dangerous to hold a Republican convention in Florida. Right. But the schools need to reopen. Right. It's And teachers are essential workers. The poll workers are not. Well, so this is the Decameron with Zoom, you know? I mean, <laughs> you know, rich people get to stay at home and keep their kids at home and keep the, their, their, yeah. themselves yeah. protected. And vote by mail, I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure most yeah, of these assholes sure. will be voting by mail. And they get to go onto their public platforms and decry everyone else doing exactly what they've been doing in private. Um, and demanding that they open schools in a state that just canceled the Republican National Convention. Because gathering people together in a small space for an extended period of time is too fucking dangerous to do during a pandemic. Right. Um, that's right. the panic. And it's happening here in Springfield. You know, people are trying to figure out exactly what the right thing to do and and really trying to figure out how to make a flexible system out of a system that was never designed to be flexible in the first place right right um and that's causing... and i feel for teachers i, I do feel for teachers well you know I, I come from a family of teachers a job. yeah you come from a family of teachers these are not people who are overpaid these are people who work with their asses off to educate children because they love it and that's it's they calling. donate their own money to have their underpaid paychecks to mm -hmm. provide supplies to their kids so yeah. and they've been expected to solve all kinds of social problems yeah because we don't tax the rich to pay for anything yeah. and dumping a, a pandemic into the box of things they need to figure out while it's the their CDC, job to yeah. babysit kids in right. a pandemic so we can all get back to work, et cetera, et cetera. While, yeah. While the CDC basically says, whatever, dude, you know, the, yeah. the, wipe everything bobs, down and try to keep masks on your first graders. Yeah. Okay. Our, our boss yeah. won't let us do science. So we're just going to give up. And yeah. so the CDC is giving show up. you a picture of a socially distant classroom with deaths six feet apart right. when you've got 20 kids in a 10 by 13 room. Yeah. If, if undercrowded classrooms were the problem before the pandemic, then I'd say, you know what? We can get in there with a yardstick and figure shit out. But that is not the problem. The problem is yeah. overcrowded classrooms already. Exactly. Too many students per teacher already. Yep. And now we're going to add this on top of that. No. And as far as I'm concerned, if I have any say about it, um, ain't nobody going back to school until there's a, uh, until there's a vaccine. Yeah. That's yeah. just that's, that's crazy. That would be me too. But – our girls want to go back to school. Yes, they do. I mean, they really do. Mm -hmm. And they're willing to wear a mask and they're willing to carry hand sanitizer with them. And they're willing to do whatever it takes just so they can see their friends. So, I, you know, it's it's psychologically harmful to them. It is. To be away from school. To be around um, us, frankly. To be around to be us around is us. psychologically <laughs> harmful for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Uh, David Brooks is very upset about censorship. Yeah. Can you yeah. explain to me why he decided that Christopher Hitchens was the person he needed to talk about? Why was he going to hitch his star to Christopher Hitchens? Well, first of all, Christopher and, and Hitchens. And really go, fight on that hill. And Christopher sure. Hitchens, rest in peace. Yeah. 
he had some clever things to write about. He was he was a, he knew how to use words. He was also a drunk yeah. and uh, a bit of a misogynist, if you don't mind me saying so. More than a bit of a misogynist. <laughs> and as someone wrote on Twitter, I, I, used, I was friends with Christopher Hitchens. We used to pal around. And then after 9-11, he you know, threatened to call the FBI on me. Yeah, I don't um, want to be I don't want to be a strident. Uh, you know, dangerous woman, though, drift class. No, no. Well, you're not so, funny. There's the problem number one. And chick number one, funny. women can't be funny. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. unless you Unless you're dykey, Jewish, mm-hmm. or ugly. Those, well, are, those are the three things that funny women, if you have one of those qualities or more, then you can do it. Well, Jewish, dykey, or fat and ugly. Yeah. If yeah. you're going to, thank you, Toadie Fields, who checks <laughs> every box what I said. and was the, fucking the, hilarious. The, yeah, the cage match between the corpse yeah. of Toadie Field and the corpse of Christopher Hitchens. Yeah. Tony Hitchens wins in a heartbeat. Yeah, no, that's over in about a minute. <laughs> stop it, stop it. He's had too much. He's already dead. Don't hurt him anymore. No, I mean, it, if you're going to argue an indefensible position, as David Brooks always does, it helps to uh, pull a quote out of the Cato Institute, which I certainly don't trust, <laughs> and pick some pick some guy who's dead so you can impute to him all of the things you want to say yourself. Because let's face it, if you swapped out Christopher Hitchens for David Brooks in this <laughs> column, he would be laughed off the planet. Yeah. Because David Brooks enjoys... But you can't speak ill of the dead, no. so it no. puts him on a platform that is... Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Okay. No, he wants to have... He wants this to be a... a a funeral oration where no one would dare speak up. And I'm sorry, I'm speaking up, but I'm not speaking up about Christopher Hitchens, who I don't really care about because he's long gone. What I care about is the fact that David Brooks, as I wrote today, would not have a career if it weren't for censorship. David Brooks. The, but you're talking about a very specific kind of I censorship. Am. I'm talking about a really, a, a big kind of, a brutal, savage, um, uh, amputation kind of censorship. Mm-hmm. Uh, David Brooks has been writing for decades um horribly shitty opinions that are almost always wrong um interspersed with really treacly both siderist opinions which are almost always wrong these are opinions calibrated to massage the um the the the, uh, ganglia of america's elite college professors and college presidents and ceos and political leaders but they have nothing to do with the country in which he lives he's writing for a small rich cloistered group of mostly white guys who want to believe that the Republican party is a party of, you know, chin stroking Jeffersonian Burke quoting, blah, blah, blah. And David Brooks fed that illusion until it all fell apart when Donald Trump was elected. So David Brooks has been lying for a living and getting everything horribly wrong, going back to before the Iraq war. Now there is no other field of endeavor where someone can be completely fucking wrong about everything all the time in, again, a very public way and keep their job, especially when the thing that David Brooks fails at consistently and spectacularly is the literally the one thing he was hired to do. And he just fucks it up every time. And it's been doing, and I've been writing about David Brooks now for over 15 years. So I speak with some degree of authority on the subject. So how does David Brooks keep his job? When, when his job would be so much done so much better by a drunk monkey <laughs> with a typewriter. I mean, how, I know, I know, I know the answer to that how one. How do you know? Because you coined the... Uh, I coined the Beltway Iron Rule of David Brooks. You did. Didn't I? Which is? It is, it is required to quote what David Brooks wrote today. Right. It is forbidden to quote what David Bro- Brooks wrote last week or that, any time before that. <laughs> that is correct. That is, and that is a kind of really astonishing act of censorship where it's not just David Brooks, but David Brooks, everyone in his profession declares arbitrarily declares the past off limits every couple of weeks. So that it's, it's like, no, we're just not going to talk about that. We're not going to mm-hmm. talk about what David Brooks wrote last yesterday or the day before. We're not even going to put him in a venue where it's possible to ask him that question. We're not going to field any questions about the Iraq war, his stupid opinions about Bernie Sanders, his shitty opinions about Donald Trump, his ridiculous bullshit about, about deficits. The we're Bush not tax to, cut. The Bush tax he cuts. Wa- which, he, wanted, he wanted it twice as big. Let's make it, it even bigger. Make it even bigger. The economy's never going to have a recession. That's just crazy right. talk. <laughs> And we're not going to talk we don't have about, to worry about deficits ever. Right. 
We're not going to talk right. about the many, 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 many columns he wrote about how important marriage is and divorce is crazy during a time he was dumping his wife and taking for up an with, intern. for an intern. <laughs> and when when Brian Lamb on C-SPAN finally asked him about that, about two years after I noticed David Brooks wasn't wearing his wedding ring anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, David Brooks says, I, I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, right. Are there lawyers involved? And he I, wrote I, in his book he wasn't going to talk yeah. about it. Uh, his, there are lawyers his, involved. His and, book on, yeah. Yeah. And like, so here's a person who is entirely dependent, a writer. This is a writer who doesn't want anyone quoting him to himself. A person. And let's a, be clear. Let's be clear. The there are lawyers involved. Yes. Means that he has a gag order on his ex-wife yes. to write about what a shitty husband he yes. was. He has a Donald That's, Trump. Um, he NDA. paid her not yeah. to write about it, yeah. and so he's not going to write about it. That's can't, the agreement. I give you, you lots of money and a house, and you don't write about what a shitty husband but, I am. But didn't yeah. you write a lot about? No, I never wrote about that stuff. <laughs> um, didn't you write about the Iraq War? People who opposed the Iraq War were losers, and uh, never said anything like that. You're totally so, w- able to to chide black people for the lack of marriage in their right. communities, right. right? And so when. In the rare on the rare occasions where David Brooks steps out into a public venue where someone might ask him a question, I was there for the one time this happened. He just lied about it. He just stood up in, in a pulpit at, at, in Elmhurst at the uh, Hammerschmidt Auditorium and lied mm-hmm. about it. People yeah. asked the woman asked him, "Didn't you write this and this and this and this and this?" And how she do you had, feel about she that had now? Clips. I saw she that clipped. video. She had actually papered, yeah. cut out this clips was you. of what he'd written. And she was I don't think I ever him. wrote that. He was quoting yeah. it. I don't think I ever wrote anything like that. Here's yeah. what I really think now. And that's how David Brooks uses, and David Brooks and the entire Beltway media, and uh, Joe Scarborough's in this camp as well. Uh, Michael Gerson's in this. All of the conservative pundits that, are, that are, still have commanding positions in the media all have the authority to simply declare, we are not going to talk about the past now. And right. if you bring it up, you don't get to go on television, which is a, which is a mighty act of censorship. So David Brooks protects his career by making sure that he's never in a position to be asked to justify the bloodthirsty bullshit he wrote a year ago or two years Mm -hmm. ago or five years. And I, again, I can't as a writer. And that's cancel culture to me. You're canceling your own writing, though. Like you said, it's amputation. It's amputation of the entire – and it's repeated. It's ongoing because everything David Brooks writes turns out to be shitty two months from now. So we have to keep declaring more and more – near to the present it's moment a jubilee an, an intellectual yeah. jubilee for david brooks and i don't want to talk about that now and <laughs> the privilege of being able yeah. to say i don't want right. to talk about that right right is is enormous and he right. would not have that privilege were he not gifted a position which he does not deserve by the schulzberger family in the new york times and pbs and npr and meet the press and college lectures and and, and until we know why he has that privilege yeah we need to keep talking about it. We do. I mean, that's and, my personal opinion. I know there are people who say, oh, why do you talk about David Brooks? Why elevate him? Mm-hmm. Until we know what the reason is, why the world is set up the way it is, because it's a secret. Right. And you're not allowed to talk about that either. No. What is it? Where is the dead hooker that David right. Brooks has on and everybody? You might recall there was a person on Morning Joe, I don't know, seven years ago, six, seven years yeah. ago, who yeah. said, who got onto the subject of, about, of David Brooks. It was like, well, let, let's all agree. That he's there's, wrong. There's, there's some stuff he's good at and stuff he's not, but no one's more has been more wrong about David Brooks and everyone on set just shit themselves. And that yeah. was the last time you saw that person on Morning Joe because you were not. And there's there an audible gasp from Mika Brzezinski. There was. Just, <gasps> yeah. And just recently, I mean, by recently, I mean like three years ago, um, Bill Crystal and Mika Brzezinski and Joe Scarborough got into a screaming match. Mm-hmm. Over you who talked was, about this last week, yeah, yeah. Over who was wrong about Trump, but then it was like, yeah. okay, let, let's not talk about that anymore. Let's not talk about right. that because we're all fucking guilty. So let's all just agree not to talk about it. And uh, let me repeat: as a writer, I cannot imagine living in mortal terror of being asked opinions the wrote, about the shit I wrote. Ago. Yeah, about yeah. For, about avoiding people who want to talk to me about. Well, so David Brooks, <laughs> David Brooks is not afraid of being censored. David Brooks is afraid of being remembered and widely yeah. cited. And yeah. that's, that is a level of censorship because it couldn't happen without the entire apparatus for the Beltway the media going of, along a with A lot it. of people, yeah. Uh, EJ Dion when has to go along I, with When it. you and I are writing to listeners, podcast yep. listeners who ask mm-hmm. us stuff, yep. I'm constantly going back to stuff I wrote in 2004, mm-hmm. 2005, 2006 and saying, by the way, I wrote this thing. Yep. By the way, 2016, I wrote this 
I, I mean, I refer once a week to the article I wrote called Don't You Dare Call It Trumpism. Yes. As I've lined up exactly <laughs> what's going to happen, you know, yep. already before he was elected, the Beltway media was trying to separate Trump from the Republican Party. Right. Despite the fact that Donald Trump, he lies a lot, but he was, isn't lying when he says he got more primary voter votes from Republicans than any other candidate in history. All true. And All those true. voters didn't just drop from the sky and oh. vote for Trump. They were registered Republican <laughs> voters who voted in primaries. That's not a convenient thing to do for a lot of people. Voting in Republican primaries is the party faithful, and they voted for Trump over and over and over again. So, so that's the Republican Party. I I, I want to correct something I said earlier. Sure. Uh, the quote from Christopher Hitchens, that women are not funny, and, and the exceptions are if you're hefty, dikey, or Jewish. Right. And uh, in that spirit, and I know she would appreciate this, I want to wish a very happy 100th birthday to Bella Abzug. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. She is a hundred. She would be a hundred years old today. Wow. There would be no squad. There would be no AOC without Bella Abzug. And she understood politics and uh, was a fighter. Wow. And we really need to appreciate all she did. Um, she she Happy features birthday, prominently. Bella. She features prominently in uh, Mrs. America. Mrs. America. Yeah. Uh, and she she's the pragmatist. She's the one who. Uh, it reminds me of Hillary Clinton and Black Lives Matter. You know, she wants a bill. She wants something that will pass the Congress, mm -hmm. that will pass in state legislatures. And that's what, why she's so passionate about ERA. You have class. There's a new tone. Yes. The president new, has a new tone. It, tones were achieved <laughs> and corners were turned this week, Big Al. <laughs> For about a minute. And then Donald Trump went back to being and the then horrible he his mouth. <laughs> yeah. Wonk at, Wonk at or someone at Washington Post said, you know, it, there's his whole new tone. And then he opened his mouth. <laughs> yeah. Donald Trump keeps ruining imaginary Donald Trump by showing up as real Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 you know again, and we're not going to do you know I'm not going to riff on it this week because I'm just tired of it. But Chuck Todd, Chuck Todd was in the middle of it. Chuck Todd. Yeah. The 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 only thing I will remind people of is that when you hop on social media and see people just banging their heads on the on the desk and wondering why the fuck does Chuck Todd have this job? He sucks at the job. He's terrible at the job. I agree with you. Chuck Todd is terrible at his job. Chuck Todd is just as bad in just the same way as his predecessor was, David Gregory. Take those two data points and draw a line between them. Yeah. It is Sounds clear. Like there's a boss hiring somebody to sit in that seat what, and they have that quality. What right? kind of jelly spined clown can we get to put in this chair who will roll over her Republicans and make sure that the seat is always polished for Hugh Hewitt? Hey, there's mm -hmm. Chuck Todd. Let's put him in place. So once Chuck Todd is gone, as you know, we all eventually move on to something else or get fired or what have you. Um, some other buffoon, just like Chuck Todd, will be hired to put in put in that seat. Be given six months grace, and and everyone will go like, "Holy shit, this guy's terrible." I fear they'll go, they'll start remembering Chuck Todd as the good old days. People skip over David Gregory. Yes, they do. When they talk about yes, the good do. old days of of Meet the Press, good old Tim Russert. I don't remember good old Tim Russert. I was writing about Tim Russert when Tim Russert was writing about That's the right. was Tim Russert. Tim Russert was high while yeah. Dick Cheney was on lying about the New York Times yeah. and about stories that he'd planted in the New York Times. Yeah. And then he says, I want to credit the New York Times for this story. And Tim yeah. Russert would go, blah, 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 hmm. blah, blah. Mm -hmm. that's great. So, that's great, Mr. Vice President. Yeah. Tim Russert, you know, would play video of what you said oh, a month ago and raise an eyebrow and people would fall apart. And that's fine. Yeah. But Tim Russert was not all that. He was okay. But he, th it was, according to Dick Cheney, his favorite show to go on, to launch the propaganda. His favorite show was, was Tim Russert to launch. Most reliable yeah. source of letting me just say whatever the fuck I want. Not getting exactly. down. Exactly. Tim exactly. Russert. But but when the people remember, oh, good old days of Tim Russert, how's Chuck Todd? Like, how did you forget the David Gregory period? Oh, God, that's right. That's the problem. It's mm -hmm. it's such a standard operating procedure now to put a drone like that in a position like that to do the shit that the networks want done and in terms of not pushing Republicans, not asking follow-up questions, letting liars lie in the name of balance because we have to have both sides on and giving a, a, a permanent seat to the both sides do it clowns. That's what they're hiring for. That's why you don't remember David Gregory, because David Gregory is just Chuck Todd with better hair and no mustache. Yeah. 
And the yeah. next guy or next man or woman will be just the same, just as bad. So give up on the media. Just listen to the professional love podcast. That's what <laughs> I think. Uh, several people want us to uh, remember Michael Brooks, who passed away this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did not know him, and I don't think you knew him. Nope. The, there are circles within the blogosphere that you know we we emerge from, and that circle is not one that we were a part of. No, um, we were not part I, of the same I, I appreciate that he is a loss to the liberal blogosphere, mm-hmm. and I appreciate he's a loss to liberal podcasting, and uh, we certainly want to acknowledge uh, his passing. Mm-hmm. Um, How's this, how's this overthrow the corrupt duopoly thing working out for you, Drift Glass? Yeah, I thought, you know, occasionally I just go to my fishing hole <laughs> and I bait up a hook and go, what were people talking about not 50 years ago? No, just no. three, four years ago, five years ago. What were people talking And I went back and got the, um, got the receipts from Matthew Dowd. Um, and the whole, <laughs> you know, that we got to overthrow the corrupt duopoly. And I'm not voting for either candidate. Both candidates are terrible. They're equally awful. Hillary's awful. My God. And we need to disrupt the system. And I just, even if I'm the only person doing it, I really mm-hmm. do think this is, again, this is a, an act of censorship. Matthew mm-hmm. Dowd and Ron Fournier and a bunch of other people, but those were the two worst offenders, were just on every show all the time, on social media all the time, on panel discussions all the time, sitting there just saying, both sides, both sides, both sides, the corrupt duopoly is the problem, overthrow the system. This is all they did. For 2015, 2016, this is all they did all the time. And Matthew Dowd is the chief political analyst for ABC News. Before that, he was the chief architect of George W. Bush's reelection campaign in 2004. So it, I think it is fair to ask him, how's that working out for you? Yeah. This is a position yeah. you very, very publicly took all over the place. You were butt scooting this bullshit all over the place. Four years later, don't you think it's fair to get into the arena with someone who remembers what you said and answer for what you wrote? Why are you ashamed of what you wrote? Why won't you acknowledge what you wrote? Because it was so phenomenally wrong and it doesn't allow him to lord it over other people in DC. Well, this is, this is what I mean. Matthew Dowd and Ron Fournier's really despicable history, just shameful history of this kind of bullshit centrist both sides do it i'm voting independent you should too nonsense from these extremely elevated platforms has just gone down the memory hole it's something well, that we privileged white men get to do that drift glass it's called censorship it's all cancel well, culture blue gal. and ted yoho gets to pretend he didn't say what he said right. you know who got canceled by and- matthew dowd i did <laughs> <laughs> yes you did and i did I, I got canceled by matthew dowd and by abc news by extension <laughs> um, for asking him what, where do you get off saying shit like this when you know it's not true? How do you, yeah. where do you stand now that everything that you said turned out to be bullshit? And his response to me was call my, my readers stupid mm-hmm. and to block me. Yeah. Now that on, in the social media universe, when you are, have a commanding position and you're wrong, it's not yeah. that our positions are co-equal and equally, you know, equally goodwill on both sides. You're just fucking wrong. And you mm-hmm. know you're wrong, and you're publicly wrong, and you don't want and to. The way admit to do it. it is run away and lock lock the lock door, the door. Bar of the yeah. castle behind you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, somebody who couldn't lock the door behind him was Ted Yoho. <laughs> yeah, he just got killed. <laughs> yeah, he got. I mean, I love the way Charlie Pierce described it. Of <laughs> he's getting his spleen removed and uh, yeah. other other parts of his body juggled. Yeah, yeah. Um, by. Uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, yes. who was accosted by him on yes. Monday. Yes, she was. And the fact that he said under his breath or to his colleague after she had left the stairs of the U.S. Capitol building mm-hmm. and he said fucking bitch to his in, in earshot of a reporter mm-hmm. and his colleague, uh, for her, the way I heard her 10 minute speech, which was very good. And you should go look, it's at Crooks and Liars. You can mm-hmm. hear the whole thing and there's a transcript. And I know that because I put it up. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the point was the accosting, the, the walking up to her as she's getting ready to go vote and calling her dangerous right. and uh, a whole bunch of other things that were not swear words. Uh, and uh, it was over policing, you know, and over an actual issue. Mm-hmm. And he accosted her and she used the word accosting several times 
um, that it is okay to be have a wife and have two daughters and still accost women because you're a privileged white man. Mm -hmm. And she spoke for the majority of American women who have been through very similar situations in their life. Yes, she did. I, I had was on the phone with my dad this morning, 83 years old, lives in Pittsburgh. I'm worried about him because Pittsburgh is a hot spot. He said, don't worry, I'm wearing a mask and washing my hands. And those hot spot, the hot spot and the spike is coming from these, he called them, venues that <laughs> appeal to young people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So I said, OK, well, you're staying away from those venues, Dad. Oh, yeah. You know, he's staying away from those venues. So uh, he says that he thinks he's going to be OK. Yeah. Well, you said he had a socially distanced uh, trip to his favorite bar. Yes, he did. He did a socially distanced trip to his favorite bar. And there were two people in there and they sat apart. And yeah. he had a I, I don't know if he had the potato pancake, Reuben, but. That's a that's a good thing to have at Max's. Now, now I want one. Now I want one. Now I want one. Great. Now I want one. The potato pancake Reuben at Max's Allegheny Tavern in Pittsburgh is really, really good. It's really good. It's really good. Uh, so at any rate, uh, I talked to my dad this morning and he said, did you hear AOC? Because she was so good. <laughs> and I said, yes, dad. I heard AOC. I put her up at Crypton Liars. If you want to watch the whole thing and read a transcript, go over there and read it. And he said, he said, uh, she was really good. And I said, yeah, she speaks for a lot of women who've been through that. And he said, oh, and I said, oh, yeah, I had a total stranger on the streets of Boston, Massachusetts, come up to me and say, you're not smiling enough. Yeah. All I was doing was walking to work. That's it. Just Thanks. getting off the bus and walking into my office building. <laughs> and this total stranger walks up to me, a white man, and mm -hmm. says, you're not smiling enough. And that man was Christopher Hitchens. <laughs> <laughs> you're hefty dikey. Are you Jewish? Because you're kind of funny to me. Okay. Um, anyway, it was, uh, yeah, and, and it was a surprise to my dad. that mm -hmm. oh, really? My daughter got treated mm -hmm. like that? Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a lot of men out there that don't realize, yeah, your daughter's put up with a whole lot of shit I, that I have you don't be, hear about. <laughs> I have to be, um, in, news I get from the girls has to be filtered. Yeah. Because yes. like, no, 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 don't worry. Don't worry. I got this covered. I really, cause I really feel like I should go talk to this person and loom oh, yeah. a foot and a half yeah. over them and explain yeah. to them what mattered. They, they do gentlemen. come home and, and let you know the shit they've been through they that do. day. They yes. Do. And they do yes. know that them, I am always on call for, to, for, for a beat down for a yeah. six foot eight beat day, hey, a little and, visit. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not talking about, you know, no one can date my stepdaughter. I'm no, not, I'm I not that asshole, oh, but no, you're, I'm, you're that too. <laughs> I'm, you know, I, I'm that half kidding. Um, yeah. What yeah. I'm hundred percent serious is um, when it's within my ability to make sure no woman in my, you know, in my catchment area right. is abused or harassed, or harassed yes. call yes. on me. I'm, I'm happy to, you will be you know, happy to walk into a building. Absolutely. All happy. Six foot eight of you. Yeah. And and make your make your opinion known about how you should be treating this little five foot one middle child right. <laughs> at the grocery store that she works at. Yeah, I demand yeah. to see Christopher Hitchens. And <laughs> sir, this is a Wendy's drive through, and and he's dead. So you're kind of out of luck yeah, on you're both. Kind of out of luck. <laughs> Damn, I was misinformed. Oh, uh, the, the other thing that struck me about AOC's comments was she went out of her way to say that she personally is not affected by this. Right. Well, she's thrown out drunks in a bar right. who've called her a fucking right. bitch before. She, she's, she, I've heard this. She's heard this hundreds of times right. on the streets of New York City. Uh, but yeah. it was it was you can't hurt me. But right. I'm going to take this and turn it into a teachable moment. Teachable moment, people. And she's really good at this. She's she really, really good at this. Good at this, I, yeah. I am just in awe of her native political chops. They're just yep. impressive yep. as hell. Yeah. Yep. They are. Uh, There's a Bible bitch, I believe. If we have a Bible bitch on the list, that's not a big transition there, no. but let's do Bible bitch. Bible bitch. That's not scriptural. I've been watching the morning prayer from Canterbury Cathedral on YouTube every morning since uh, one of the cathedral cats, Tiger, mm -hmm. interrupted a prayer service by dipping his paws in the pastor's tea milk during morning prayer. And that video went viral. This was a few weeks ago. The morning prayer service has had to be moved to the gardens of 
Canterbury Cathedral because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And of course, they are much further along in terms of reopening than we are. They're, the cathedral, they are having church services with mass now. Things are gradually reopening in England. Mm -hmm. Since Tiger dipped his paws in the milk, I've been watching each morning. Uh, and it's it's kind of comforting to watch Anglican morning prayer. It's not my tradition, but there's a little bit of Downton Abbey in there. Yeah. And uh, it's it's nice to have a regular habit to start the day in kind of a calm way, hear a psalm read and say a prayer. Um, but it's also kind of fun in a Monty Python, Michael Palin sort of way. Michael Palin was always the best rector in Monty Python. And you know that Michael Palin grew up with Church of England enthusiasts. Because, oh, yeah. Bless, oh, bless you, Father Tim. <laughs> the mm -hmm. Lord. You know, mm -hmm. The way he said the Lord. And and you just know that he grew up with that kind of background and, and brought it to his comedy. So very often I will think of, we, we must bless the Lord with the holy hand grenade. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah. You know, this, is, this, is, this was not a stretch. This was not parody. This was no. just... Yeah. quoting Flat what they grew up with what, with what they grew up with yeah. and it's funny as and hell funny. right right uh and then of course the cats are still there every every morning and, and if they're not there there are chickens and roosters this morning robert was interrupted by an on-screen rooster going er, 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 <laughs> during, during him reading a psalm i was uh, so i was just almost done denying christ when this rooster showed up. <laughs> the rooster came yeah. in and we're doing the third, the third the third time the the cock crew, right? Mm -hmm. The third time. Um, but one of the things they always say, R Pastor Robert always says every morning in morning prayer is, um, and, he, and it's said during communion, it's said all the time, but it's sort of a repeated refrain is, as it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. That is a common refrain in, in the lectionary, as they call it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's calming to me as a believer. God is always there. There's constancy, and that's comforting. Um, but on the other hand, there have been days when I have heard that, as it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. And I hear, same shit, different day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's oh. like, every day is the same. Oh, that's what that means. And And the Bible would definitely back you up on that. Yeah. You know, there's so many things that happened in the Bible that you can't help but think, wow, they had corruption, they had oppression, they had the rich taking advantage of the poor, they mm -hmm. had famine, yep. disease, pestilence. Pestilence, by the way, I went and looked up what pestilence is. Pestilence literally. is literally a killing plague. Mm -hmm. It's it's a disease that kills off large parts of the population, and, and specifically the bubonic plague, of course, mm -hmm. the Black Death, but... Uh, any plague, any disease that kills off bodies of people is pe is the pestilence. And that's what we're dealing with today with COVID. Mm -hmm. So same shit, different day happens. I mean, and then uh, w one time uh, in the past couple of weeks, Robert was reading the Psalm 82. And in the message, he doesn't read it from the message. He reads it from the lectionary. But the the way the modern translation goes is everything's falling apart. The world's coming unglued. <laughs> and I just think, oh, really? Oh, okay. Thanks for that. too, huh? Thanks for the and information. It was in the beginning. It is yeah. now and never shall be. Yeah. The world's coming unglued. Amen. Um, anyway, the Thursday, yesterday's morning prayer was very good. Uh, Robert sat under a fig tree. And he read the story of Jesus and the fig tree from Luke 21. And this is right before Jesus is going to be. Uh, led to his crucifixion. So he he knows and he's trying to let his disciples know bad things are coming and we're going to celebrate the Passover and then I'm going to be crucified. And so I'm going to read from Luke 21 in the message, which is, again, the modern translation of the Bible. Jesus said, watch out for doomsday deceivers. Many leaders are going to show up with forged identities claiming I'm the one or the end is near. Don't fall for any of that. When you hear of wars and uprisings, keep your head and don't panic. And again, <laughs> speaking of writers who are funny and, and have that tradition, don't panic in large friendly letters on the cover <laughs> of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is always uh, uh, a good reminder. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't panic. Don't panic. This is routine history and no sign of the end. Mm -hmm. 
he went on. Nation will fight nation, ruler will fight ruler over and over. Huge earthquakes will occur in various places. There will be famines. You'll think at times the very sky is falling. Mm -hmm. Look at a fig tree, any tree for that matter. When the leaves begin to show, one look tells you that summer is right around the corner. The same here. When you see these things happening, you know God's kingdom is here. Don't brush this off. I'm not just saying this for some future generation, but for this one too. These things will happen. Sky and earth will wear out. My words don't wear out. But be on your guard. Don't let the sharp edge of your expectation get dulled by parties and drinking and shopping. Otherwise, that day is going to take you by complete surprise, spring on you suddenly like a trap. For it's going to come on everyone, everywhere, at once. So whatever you do, don't go to sleep at the switch. Pray constantly that you will have the strength and wits to make it through everything that's coming and end up on your feet before the Son of Man. And I found that lesson. The Son of Man, by the way, is really comforting because that's the human Jesus. He's not Mm -hmm. insisting that you believe that Jesus is God or that you you take it to that level. He's saying, look, you're going to be with me at the crucifixion. He's talking to his disciples. Right, right. And so... Uh, make sure you're on your feet when this happens. Make mm-hmm. sure that you're you're sober and conscious of what's happening. Because it's going to be and bad. So it's going to be very it's gonna bad. It's going to be awful. And yeah. it's going to be awful. And it is awful. And what we're going through now is awful. And what it requires is um, sobriety. It requires us to be uh, the stable ones. Well, I'm not sure because I can handle sobriety QAnon, at this point. But... QAnon is not the sobriety. Right. Okay? That's, Those that's the, the – yeah. <laughs> And, and and Jesus dealt with that kind of crackpot nonsense mm-hmm. as well. And that's, as I said, as it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be, is same shit, different day. Yeah. They dealt with it then. They were corrupt judges. They were corrupt, uh, you know, kings and leaders in government and bribes. The word bribes appears in the Bible multiple times. Yeah. Uh, and and we're dealing with it now in Ohio. You know, they're bribes to hurt poor people. Yeah. People taking bribes to pass legislation that hurts poor people. Well, and there it's were the thing that happens in the Bible too. The um the people who you know Jesus as the forgiving, the saving, graceful person. People forget that he shit all over certain people pretty yes. thoroughly. Hypocrites yes. and Pharisees were not on his list of people who I'm going to worry about their salvation. Yeah. There's, yeah. Look over those. See those guys. They're shitty people. They're doing they're terrible people. things, and yeah. they're doing them to the poor, and they're doing to the destitute. Don't be like those guys. Those guys are assholes. <laughs> exactly. hey, those guys are assholes. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And as we <laughs> and and as we say on this podcast every so often, before enlightenment, chop wood carry water. Right. After enlightenment, chop wood carry water. That's and chopping we don't wood say and- enlightenment. We say elections <clears throat> before yeah. elections. Chop wood carry water. Then vote. Mm-hmm. And shop would carry. We have work to do mm-hmm. every day. Uh, I have in our notes about Doug Jones in Alabama. He yep. won that election through postcards to voters. Mm-hmm. They made sure every Democratic registered voter in Alabama had a postcard reminding them to vote. That's what helped him win that election. And uh, he's a lucky son bitch because he's running against a corrupt asshole. And mm-hmm. there is. Uh, Nothing covered that shall not be revealed. Trust me. <laughs> I mean, this is what I don't worry about, Michael Flynn and, and Roger Stone. No. They're criminals. And and to think they're getting away with it, they're not. They're they're gonna evade taxes and and do corrupt shit again. And their co conspirator won't be in the White House. And they won't get off. And so I'm not worried about the, I mean, I'm sorry they're gonna commit another crime, but that's what's going to happen. The recidivism mm-hmm. among that level of criminal, they they always think they can get away with it because money mm-hmm. and celebrity is going to protect them. And it's not. So uh, I, I'm not impressed with them getting off this time. That's just, you know, they're Batman villains and they're not going to get off. So uh, you want to do a news roundup now? We're getting sure. late into the hour here. Sure. Oh, well, uh, everyone should know that Macy's uh, granted $9 million in bonuses to top executives after cutting 3,900 jobs. So shop carefully. Yeah. Well, aren't they in bankruptcy too or close to it? I, yeah. But I, everybody's going to get their closely. bonus before yeah. they do that. Right. And Lockheed Martin 
is asking for CARES money while making $3.5 billion in profit in fiscal year 2020. Katie Porter is having none of it. Yeah. Again, another uh, hero, another Democratic Katie liberal Porter, hero. God, is she good. She had the vice president of Lockheed Martin saying, are you? And it was it was funny. Like Lockheed Martin wrote a letter to the White House asking for money on the CARES Act. And he said, I am not aware of the of any letter, ma'am. Uh huh. And then she just flat out asked him, so did you ask for money on the CARES Act? Yes. Yes. It was not a <laughs> well, letter. Why did you pay it with your $3.5 billion in profit that you made in 12 months? Yeah. I don't, I don't want to answer that question now. Yeah, well, be, mm. it's a disruption because of COVID-19 that we're asking for the money. You made $3.5 billion in a year. Mm-hmm. What disru- That's not a disruption for average Americans. Trust no. me. No, that's a pretty uh, good year. Um, while President Cognitive Disintegration was clogging up the airwaves, giving himself prizes for remembering five words, actually not remembering, but making up five words to remember, uh, his administration was quietly ending Obama's fair housing rule, quote, leaving it up to neighborhoods. Can you say redlining? The state of Indiana uh-huh. makes not wearing a mask a Class B misdemeanor punishable by six months in jail. Mm-hmm. Uh, Robert E. Lee High School in Fairfax, Virginia, is changing its name to the John R. Lewis High School. Yeah. And I said to you this week that if Barack Obama was a white Republican, Uh Southeast High School would already be renamed after. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. But in Springfield, but Every, uh, everything here that's is not going to happen because the raw the the people who are dying off in this town would be real mad about it. Yes, they would. Uh, the Senate passed its version of the National Defense Authorization Act, which includes the removal of Confederate names from military bases. Trump has threatened to veto the seven hundred and forty billion dollar bill over the provision to rename Confederate military bases. He also just tweeted this morning that uh, Jim Inhofe has promised him he's not going to take the Confederate names off. So that means Trump can sign the bill. Well, there you go. Uh, I don't you know, I don't think James Inhofe is the one that names military bases, but, you know, Inhofe whatever. Uh, yeah. If 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 Little Round Top is the hill that he wants to die on, I say yeah. more power to him because we know how that battle ended. Yeah. Uh, the White House says Stephen Miller's grandmother had mild covid in March, but quote, made a full and quick recovery. However, she died on July 4th, and the death certificate says that COVID 19 led to her death from respiratory arrest. They just keep lying. And and Stephen Miller will lie about his dead grandmother for Donald Trump. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And he, they're still insisting that it, it wasn't COVID, whereas her husband and son say, yes, it was COVID. Yeah. And and also the coroner says it was COVID. So yep. um, I don't know, uh, you know, but but Stephen Miller will de- lie about his grandmother for Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. The U.S. surpassed four million coronavirus cases a little over two weeks after reaching three million, doubling the total number of infections in six weeks. New cases climbed by more than seventy one thousand, and the nation's overall death toll topped one hundred and forty thousand with more than 1,100 coronavirus deaths reported Wednesday, the first time since May 29th that the daily count exceeded that number. Public health experts have warned that the actual number of infections are potentially 10 times higher than what's been reported. Uh, And that is because the asymptomatic people that are spreading it, Mm -hmm. uh, going to bars and beaches and whatever, uh, they don't know they have it. Right. And they're not getting tested. And because because testing is still like a, a rare and and wondrous thing, as opposed to something you can stop into your local Walgreens or CVS mm-hmm. or grocery store and get done same day, which is exactly mm-hmm. what it should be. It should be flu virus. It should right. be flu vaccine. And the again, we've said this before, the reason this country put itself in a coma for four months was to buy enough time to get PPE to the medical professionals to, and to get tests everywhere. And this administration completely blew it completely just frittered it away on paranoid conspiracy theories and hydrocloxychloroquine and putting a, a fluorescent light up your ass. And that's and why we're bleach. And every other civilized country in the world is looking at us wondering what the hell happened to the United States. And the answer because is all no, Donald Trump cares about is Donald Trump well, and the stock market. And, and I would it. like, I yeah. would like a stitched on a pillow by next week. If you can handle that. <laughs> In my uh, spare time. <laughs> Republicans hate us for our freedoms. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, the White House cafeteria, two, I'm sorry, two White House cafeterias were closed and contact tracing has been initiated after an employee tested positive for you know what. A Marine assigned to Trump's helicopter squadron has tested positive for you know what. Trump was scheduled to travel to Bedminster, New Jersey. Why? Why was he going to Bedminster? Oh, to play golf, play golf. at his at his golf course. Yeah. By helicopter. Uh-huh. Another 1.4 million U.S. workers filed for unemployment insurance last week. And this is something that relates to the whole Matt Gates thing, because one of the corruption issues with Matt Gates this week was that he paid $28,000 in taxpayer funds yes. to a speechwriter. You're really not allowed to do that. Uh, the... Median income in his district is under fifty six thousand dollars a he, year. Didn't he use taxpayer money to build himself a studio in his home? A, a TV studio in his dad's house. Ah, that's right. So that he could appear on Fox and look good. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and of course, you know, appearing on Fox as a Republican—that's a necessary part of my job. That in fact, that's the only part of my job. So, the fact that he spent half the income of an average constituent illegally on a speechwriter who, by the way, uh, was fired from the White House because he spoke at a conference featuring white nationalist speakers. I mean, it goes on and on. Yeah. Uh, Matt it's, Gates has got to go. It's There is a special zip recruiter service that isn't zip recruiter <laughs> just for white nationalists because yeah. they, they tend to be passed around like dirty postcards. Honestly. Uh, the mayor of Portland, Oregon, was tear gassed by federal agents outside of a federal courthouse during a protest against the presence of federal agents in the city. Yeah. And and, and those guys are contractors. Uh, we're pretty sure from Eric Prince. Yeah. Which is illegal, flatly illegal on so Betsy many DeVos's different levels. brother. Yeah. Uh, it's it's the it's the black shirts. And they they've been hired by the Trump administration to go into cities and incite riots. So they with can your put, taxpayer with money. your taxpayer money to, to walk down the street shooting uh, rubber bullets and tear gas at moms so they can get footage for Donald Trump's campaign commercials, which I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the last campaign commercial about America, you're fucked, uh, featured <laughs> riots from other countries. That yes. They just cut into it because who the fuck? Right, listen, listen, listen. Our base are fucking morons. They will never <laughs> check. If you yep. check, they won't believe you. So, you know, put in riots from the 1920s. Put in right. put in the Hoovervilles being bulldozed. It it won't matter because they're a bunch of fucking idiots. So just do whatever you need to do. I'll be at Bedminster um, lying about golf. Right. Um, the Trump administration has been detaining migrant children in hotels and then deporting them despite federal anti-trafficking laws that require most kids to be sent to shelters for placement with family sponsors. They're still doing all the evil shit they were doing before COVID hit. They're just yep. doing it under under the cover of a global pandemic where and they've also fucked that children. up. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Trump offered Juslaine Maxwell, and I don't know how to pronounce her name and I don't care, mm -hmm. um, the accomplice of accused sex trafficker and pedophile Jeffrey Epstein he said he wished her well at his scripted by his campaign, by mm -hmm. the way. Uh, that was something John Heilman mentioned last night on Lawrence. Lawrence asked him, so who's writing this stuff that he's reading? Is it is it the White House staff or is it his campaign staff? And John Heilman didn't even raise an eyebrow. Like, oh, no, it's his campaign staff. Oh, campaign his campaign staff, staff is, is doing everything they can to make him look like he's handling the coronavirus. Yeah. And they're in charge. And so they're writing... The entire it is entirely scripted. The five o'clock follies is entirely scripted, and then it's things like I called two world leaders, and it's Bonesaw and Vladimir. Yeah, and that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. It's he has he has <laughs> notepads that vary five different words on them. So Ghislaine Maxwell was <laughs> person, woman, camera, TV. Yeah, and he remembered. Oh yes, I must wish her well, and then sort of blink promise that don't worry. I got you covered. Just keep your yeah. mouth shut. Just keep your mouth shut. And, yep. uh, you know, for, I did for I, what I did for Roger Stone, I can definitely do for you. So don't worry about it. The GOP coronavirus relief package plans to include Mitt Romney's bill, 
which would, quote, fast track Social Security and Medicare cuts. Because when is a better time to cut people's money and their health care than during the middle of a fucking pandemic? Well, and what this bill does is creates a behind closed doors bipartisan commission on the grand bargain. Oh, That's it, what he wants to it's do. It's a cat food yeah. commission. I love cat yeah. food commissions. Yeah, cat yeah. food. Eight percent of Americans think daycare centers, preschools, and K through twelve schools should open this fall without restrictions. That's eight percent. Forty six percent think schools should reopen with major adjustments. Fourteen percent say schools should reopen with minor adjustments. And 31% say schools should not open at all. We're in the 31%. We're in the 31%. I think we would prefer our girls not to go to school. Yes. But or, uh, well, I know, understand that they want to two days a week for speech class or whatever. Sure. But Well, we have a friend of ours who who, uh, who just lost her business and yeah. uh, has a building that's set up to be classroom driven mm. and can hold a lot of people. I'm thinking if if you distribute students – in groups of 10 or 12 mm -hmm. into essentially vacant but fully functional buildings mm -hmm. across the city and then teach them and you can we'll remote teach them. them up to Wi-Fi and let yeah. them be in the same room. Have a have a teacher's aide in each location and have a teacher at a central location. There's no money for that. Of course there's not. But there's no money for that. There yeah. but that is an actual possible solution to the problem of how do you socially distance students and teach them in a way that they can see their friends and they can talk to people across a crowded room. And that is, but again, it, it, there's plenty of money. The, the, the U S the, the U S treasury is, money left, is printing, right and center. Yeah. The trillions of dollars are being given away with no thought of, of you know, this, we're giving bonuses. Martin. Yeah, Martin Martin and Mason. Martin. Yes, so right. there, it is not that this is an unsolvable problem. It is a problem that we do not wish to solve because it involves because middle Republicans. class. Yeah. Because well, it involves, Republicans. It involves yep. people who aren't rich. Yeah. And that's that's really a moral failing on their part. Republicans don't want to give money to people who aren't already rich yeah. because it disincentivizes them. Yes. And Donald Trump uh, signed a memorandum seeking to ban undocumented immigrants from being counted in the census, reversing the longstanding policy of counting everyone regardless of citizenship or legal status. That has always been the standard. It is and, unconstitutional because the Constitution specifically says Congress shall count. It is he can sign memorandums till the cows come home. That's not going to happen. Well, the census has already uh, gone out, so it doesn't yeah. really matter what you say. But this Governors is just governors want everybody counted. Mayors want everybody yeah. counted. Well, and this is just uh, smashing the furniture and setting fires on the way out. That's all. He this wants. Is. Yeah, he wants to his racist base to be happy. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have mass directives from the governor, the county, and the mayor here in Springfield. Yeah, they're all on board. Um, yeah. Springfield is not doing well. Uh, there was a good cash reserve, and, and that's going to all be spent down. Most of the money that the city has, it spends already spends on police, fire, and public works. There's nothing left over for anything else. There are small groups rallying to do what they can, which I find very encouraging. I'm a small part of a couple of those groups, and um, I'm encouraged by the enthusiasm of Essentially, uh, the the entrepreneurial and and socially conscious class that exist just below the level of the curmudgeons who, who ah, I hate everything. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, so we'll see what we'll see. And if I hear our mayor say, moving forward in that direction one more time about literally any subject that you want to talk to him about is, well, we're <laughs> going to be moving forward in that direction. <laughs> I, I will just lose my, you know. Well, you know, he really wants his job to be to invite people from Iowa to come over and look at Lincoln stuff. Yeah, that's, that's his job. That's really what he wants to do. Well, so, and, and our entire economy um, is pretty much based on tourism and travel and and, and, con and conferences. Well, conferences, because yeah, this is the state yeah. capital. So state workers aren't coming here anymore for conferences. It's yeah. Lincoln you know, is buried here and everything is tagged with Lincoln. So when you're when all of your maintenance of the of the oak uh of of the lincoln cemetery um are based on taxes and revenues you raise from hotels and conferences and there right, are no hotels right. and conferences right. you can see very quickly that a whole lot of services dry up when that's yep. your basically your entire economy the plague vectors of the million unmasked march really yep are gathering in springfield tomorrow to show america just how reckless and willfully ignorant illinois republicans can be and I'll, I'll be thrilled to see how many people show up for that. Uh, millions, apparently. Thousands, <laughs> possibly hundreds. Um, but this this was planned 
unlike the Republican National Convention, this was actually planned months ago or many, mm-hmm. many weeks ago. But it was planned during the time when these assholes were showing up, screaming that the state capital had no right to keep them out, showing up with AK-47s yeah. and 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 being assholes because we uh, in New York and Chicago, sure. But, you know, we out here in the heartland know what the fuck we're doing. This was before it turned out Arizona, Texas, Florida, Florida. Uh, Cali- are, parts of California, and parts of California, yeah. the orange parts of California <laughs> are, are all spiking through the fucking roof. And then, no, there is no second wave because we're not out of the first wave yet. In fact, things are getting worse. Things are worse than they were four months ago. And, and now Texas hospitals are sending people home to die. Yeah. And this is the this is when these assholes are getting together to say, let's all send our kids to school with no masks on. What's the harm? So I'm I, I might go out and take a few pictures myself from a safe distance, but these are, you know, I've said this before, these are plague rats. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with these people. I don't care, but I we need to pry them loose of our political decision making because they are the reason things are fucked up. Okay, last but not least, John Cass. Tribune columnist finally let his anti-Semitic freak flag fly completely. Uh, he wrote a column in the Chicago Tribune about how American cities are being a Democrat run. American cities are being overrun by licentious lawless people who Democrats, liberals, the social justice warriors who are funded by billionaire George Soros. <laughs> and yep. <laughs> It's it's the source. Well, I funded- laugh, but this is this is the tip of the spear to a huge anti-Semitic purging uh-huh. of uh, by right wing thugs. That's yep. that's what this is. Soros is is a is not talk very about su- rats. I mean, it, this is it, the thing. Is not very subtle code for Jew. the, the Jewish yeah. money conspiracy, right? And uh, John Cass is finally – John Cass was the guy they brought on after Royco died because they needed a columnist. Oh, God. Cass is just a, a suburban, um, white, middle-class thug. <laughs> you know, wealthy, white, suburban Chicago asshole. And everyone knows people like this. And why he has, still has a column in the Tribune, I have no idea. But, uh, but he, he really... decided that Soros-funded prosecutors are the problem. Right. That they're – Unleashing lawlessness in America's Democrat-run cities. Okay. Yes. Yeah. On that note, <laughs> each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Tasha. Yes, Tasha is named for Ms. Romanoff. Tasha is 10 months old and blossoming. She's a very happy kitty. And why not? Tasha owns everything in her universe. Wow. You can you just look at her. She knows. I own everything. Look at me. Yes. Of course, Tasha eats freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Tasha at our Facebook page or website. You can send your Internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, ProLeftPodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. By the way, we want to let you know, and just an occasional reminder, uh, you can follow each of us on Twitter. And you can follow Pro Left Pod on Twitter as well. You can uh, look up Professional Left Podcast. That's where we announce the new show dropping, mm-hmm. and uh, you can follow us there. And then you can also follow Drift Class is at Mister M R underscore Electrico on Twitter, mm-hmm. and I'm just at Blue Gal. So we would love to have you follow us. I try to follow everybody back. If you're a good liberal, I try to follow you back. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I miss people, but. Feel free to tag me if I haven't followed you back. I'm happy to do it. And if I'm not in Twitter jail, I'm usually, you know, <laughs> out and yeah, about. I, I tend to be in, I have not been in Twitter jail yet. Uh, but Drift Glass has been in Twitter jail a couple of times. Four so. times. Four times. Yeah. It changes a man, a Blue Gal. Next time. It changes a man, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we do love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write to us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! 
Let her on the air unless you say otherwise. Hashtag save the post office. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job, and it's a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. We've got PayPal and postal address information. You can send us a card or a letter or a check. You can also uh, join our Patreon. We love our Patreon listeners. Whatever you want to do, we're here at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, look, Al, the Internet Kitties say that if they can wash their paws multiple times a day, way down between their toes, you can too. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license, copyright 2019-2020, DGBG Productions.